we are at Brighton Racecourse at the end of the day of the races. Of all of the subjects that we've looked at in this series, sport is the one that really matters. Sport is tribal battle.
Too late. Thank <laughs> you. 
I call you in at the beginning of camp. So I'm not staying, that's why. Oh. Mm. What's this video for anyway? Sorry? What's the video for? What is? The video for. Showing to people. <laughs> well, anybody who's mad enough. <laughs> told you from the beginning, have you not understood <coughs> since the earth was founded, he sits enthroned <coughs> above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy. He spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings the news. He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them each by name. 
because of his great power and mighty strength. Not one of them is missing. would go out. Dear Neil, please come to the wedding of Tracy and Howard. <laughs> RSVP. And you would have to reply, saying, yes, I will come. No, I won't come. The only thing could have been two or three in the morning or whatever, 
get her dress on, get her on gear, get her all her bridesmaids sorted out and everything else, flowers from the grocers and all the rest of it, and be there at the front door when Howard arrived. And then together they walk through the town, just like they were hoping they'd walk through Swanage. They walk through the town. So I trace, it gets worse. <laughs> they would walk through the town, and everybody who'd been invited to the wedding had to turn up. Once the door was closed, you weren't allowed in. Now there were ten girls, we read in Matthew's Gospel. Five were wise, five were foolish. Where they found the five wise, I don't know. Five, wise, five were foolish. And they were out with their oil lamps. Five had bought extra oil. Five had no extra oil. Because you were not allowed out at night unless you carried your lamp with you, did he? <laughs> you weren't allowed out unless you were carrying your lamp. And if your lamp went out, you had to go in. So there were these ten girls on the streets <coughs> waiting because they heard the rumour Howard was coming on his journey. <laughs> and during the night their lights went out, or five of them. So they said, what do they do? If we go away and try and get some more oil, we will miss the wedding feast because the door will be shut. We'll go and try and borrow some from someone else. So they asked the five wise girls who've got plenty of oil for their needs, could we borrow some of your oil? No, they said, we can't. If we lend you some of our oil, we won't have enough. And we will miss the wedding feast too. So they thought, I know, let's pop down the off licence. So they ran down there with Philip to see if they could buy some oil down there. <laughs> Picture of innocence. <laughs> Some oil down there. But of course in the middle of the night, even in those villages, the shops were closed. It was not possible to buy the oil they needed. And the bridegroom's party went on and they picked up the bride and they went on through the streets they went in and the door was closed and the five foolish girls did not get in. <coughs> now you've probably been to some wedding receptions. <coughs> you get married at three o'clock these days instead of noon. You have a big slap up meal then you go bopping and boogieing into the middle of the night and then off you go. And we think, God, oh, what a long time. What happened to 12 o'clock and be home by four? <laughs> In there, it went on for a week. Your wedding reception was about a week long. For a whole week, you were entertaining the guests. And it could have been a week later before you could actually enjoy the company of your bride or your groom. Now, Tracy would be upset by that. <laughs> but most of us might be. The five foolish girls could not borrow the oil. They could not buy the oil. And it was then too late for them to get to the wedding feast. Jesus describes the kingdom of heaven as being like a marriage feast. And Jesus is teaching us that the marriage feast is where we're going. That's where we'll end up. That's what the kingdom of heaven will be like. One long wedding reception with all the joys that it brings but Jesus says you cannot get through those gates unless you are properly prepared unless you planned and got the things that you need and can I put the things you need in simple word it's faith a 
that you can't borrow someone else's supply of faith. You won't get to the kingdom of God in heaven on anyone else's faith but your own. You can't borrow it from your parents, from your friends, from your tent officer, from Neil, from anyone else you know as a Christian. You cannot borrow their faith that gets you through. It has to be your own. It has to be our own faith. If we try to borrow it, it just will not be possible. And we will not get through. Sometimes it will also become too late to buy. If we don't get ourselves prepared and organised organize well enough in advance, then we won't actually be able to buy it when the time comes. For the faith shop may well be closed. It also means you can't buy your way to the kingdom of heaven. God is not open to bribery or purchase because his gift is a free gift. But unless we're going to be properly prepared, then the gates will be closed and it will be too late. Our faith is what will see us through. But it's faith we have to have and believe for ourselves. And if you thought this holiday was all about Paris ending, you're mistaken. This holiday is about finding and deepening and growing in faith. And then we come to the book of Joshua. And all those wonderfully hard to pronounce names which were so beautifully read to us. And you might have thought, what on earth was all that about? What it's about is, if you turn to the 12th chapter of the book of Joshua, you would probably say, well, what a load of old rubbish. Who wants to know about all these kings and all this land and everything else? Let me tell you that in the Word of God, things don't always just leap up, obviously, from the pages. We actually have to work at reading and understanding what it says. It's not always easy to find. And so in chapter 12, we read of the conquest so far. Moses had led his people, the people of God, to the Jordan, the east side. Joshua led them across the Jordan to the west and to the promised land. And in the process, a number of kings had been defeated. A number of kingdom, kingdoms had been subdued. A number of people were now under submission to the people of God. I wonder if that's your experience. And I wonder if you ever bothered to reflect on it. Not to look at today or tomorrow, but to look back in your life. And perhaps pick out some moments when, by the grace of God, some kingdoms have been defeated. They may be big kingdoms, or they may be little kingdoms. The kingdoms are perhaps the way we behave, or the way we speak, or the way we think. Perhaps sometimes our language has not been that which it should be. Our morality has not been that which we were ought to expect to be as Christians. I wonder if you ever sat down and listed the kingdoms that have been defeated. Because most people live their Christian lives for the moment. And they come in this sense of desperation. What's going to happen to me now? And they never look back in all humility and see what God has already done. <coughs> I would commend you to look back, to spend some time looking back and just list down in your Bible or somewhere handy the kingdoms of evil that would have defeated you but by God have already been defeated. There are, they are there and they will enrich your experience. They've been conquered by the grace of God. Where has the grace of God triumphed already in your life and I don't think and some of you probably won't call yourselves Christians at the moment but I don't think there's anyone here who perhaps could not look back and say there by the grace of God that was defeated because God's spirit I believe is at work in so many different ways in all of us even before we become fully conscious of his presence with us those
in the tents at lunchtime, I find any mugs in any tents, which is what I should be looking for, then it's obvious that those people really want the joy of washing up a bit more. <laughs> right, the men will be defeating the wimps in a few minutes.
still going on and off this white light. We'll let go of then. It is down. Yeah. It's recording at the moment. Yeah.